If people are to continue to live in tectonic areas, they need to develop strategies to help them survive. We need to look at how these tectonic risks can be reduced. There are four key things that need to be done in order to help reduce the hazard risk. The first is monitoring. This uses scientific equipment to detect warning signs of tectonic events. The world's active volcanoes are closely monitored by scientists. High-tech equipment is placed on the volcano to send warnings of any movements and potential eruptions. Earthquakes, however, usually occur without warning, and scientists have yet to discover a reliable way to monitor and predict earthquakes. Next comes prediction. This makes use of historical evidence and monitoring. Scientists try to make predictions about when and where a tectonic hazard may happen. This was shown in Iceland on the Eyjafjallajökull volcano, where monitoring led to an accurate prediction of the eruption. Again, this sort of prediction isn't really possible with earthquakes, but scientists can look at historical data to see where the next likely areas at risk of earthquakes could be, allowing preparations to be made. Then there's protection. This involves designing buildings that could withstand a tectonic hazard. There's often little that can be done to protect people and property from the power of a volcanic eruption. However, earth embankments or explosives can divert lava flows away from property. Earthquake protection is the main way to reduce the risk. Buildings and bridges can be built to resist the ground shaking during an earthquake. Automatic shutoff switches turn off the gas and electricity to prevent fires. Buildings can have reinforced concrete columns that are strengthened by steel frames whilst regular earthquake drills help people remain prepared. Tsunami walls can be built at the coast to protect people and important infrastructure. And finally there's planning, identifying and avoiding places most at risk. Hazard maps have been produced for dangerous volcanoes, showing the likely areas that would be affected. They can be used in planning applications and to help identify which areas need to be evacuated prior to an eruption. Maps can be produced to identify areas most at risk from damage. This means important land uses such as hospitals or reservoirs can then be protected in vulnerable areas. Emergency services can run drills to practice rescuing people from buildings using pre-prepared evacuation routes and emergency supplies need to be maintained and regularly checked. Knowing you're in an area that's vulnerable should help those in authority to make preparations for future tectonic events.